Welcome to the Solid Game University channel. This video's topic is programming a large part on a small table. So uh, an issue would arise where the working area of your machine, the size of your table, is not enough for the large part that you need to program. So an example here is this large sheet metal where I need to cut all these holes. Uh, this is a 30 by 30 inch piece of sheet metal, uh, but let's say my table is only let's say two feet wide or even smaller. Um, so I can't do this all in one program. I'll need to break it up. I'll need to basically have half the sheet hanging off the table clamped in while I do the one half of it. Um, so how would you do that? Well, you could take advantage of the fact that you can program multiple coordinate systems in one file. So what I'm actually doing here is I'm doing all the operations, let's say on this first half, all these holes under Mac one, and then on the second half, let's imagine we take the piece out, flip it around, and we'll set it up on this corner here under Mac 2. So to re remain accurate to the part, I'm just cho choosing this corner here in the bottom left corner of my part, let's say, and I can do an operation on this side, let's say this large ellipse over here. So basically using two corner systems, I'm remaining accurate to the part and I'm just having the other half hanging over the edge. So this is kind of a setup issue in reality, but inside the software, we're basically just allowing ourselves to use pre-existing pieces of the part, pre-existing features to locate the part and just continue to program side one, side two, first half, second half. Now, how does that apply when we have a feature that is dead center? So let's say we can only work up to halfway point. Uh, how would we address that? Well, first I'm gonna actually add that sketch in there to represent the working area, the, the size of the table. So let's say we can only do half the part. Well, I'm gonna sketch something on the top face of the part. We'll say from this edge of the part and we'll go to the halfway point. So we'll just say right there, it's about halfway, there it is. So we'll use this as sort of our, our working area. We're just gonna say this limits the travel of the tool. Now in a 3D toolpath, this could literally be used for the working area, but since we're only doing two and a half D toolpaths here, we're just gonna use this as a guide. Now, to further use this as a guide, I'm actually just gonna do another sketch and help me use that to help me figure out how to do the center pocket. Okay, so for the side one operations, we're gonna do just this half of the box. So I'm gonna open up a sketch, again on that face, and I'll use convert entities to project the halfway point and the bits of this pocket that I'd like to machine. So all these guys here, convert them, and on this sketch I have basically projections of those. So um, I want to machine this half of the pocket, and this is my halfway point, but I wanna actually blend this to the other side. So I'm actually gonna set this up as uh, the edge of the pocket, but offset it a little bit. So for instance, let's go to offset, and we're just gonna choose this line and put it on the opposite side. And let's say we have an overlap of a half inch. Okay, so what that line basically represents is the that side of the pocket. I'm just gonna do half the pocket here. Let's set this guy up as a construction line, just as a guide and we'll trim the rest of that. So we'll go up to trim, trim closest, and we're just gonna take off the excess material of that pocket. So these guys right here, and right here. So that internal area is as much of the pocket as I can do on side one. Okay, so I'll just exit out of there. And if I really wanna keep track of what I'm doing here, I can always rename the sketches. So the first one, let's just say table, limits, and then sketch one, we can say, uh, you know, center pocket, first side. So the first half, let's add another sketch. So let me just exit out of that sketch. Let's add another sketch for the other side, and we'll do the same thing. We'll do convert entities of the table limits and of the pocket. So we'll say that, that, and that. Okay, same sort of thing. I can turn this into a construction line. Let's put that offset. Actually, we can actually use that because now we have that half inch area that we're just gonna blend. So I'm just gonna work up to that extension line. So let's just change that back to 
full line. Let's do trims. Okay, and now we have a pocket on the second side. Close that out. Let's call that center pocket side two. Okay, so with some sketches, we can further control our part and we can do side one, side two, pocket. So let's just do that real quick, or in this case, profile. So I'm just going to open this guy up. Let's just do save and copy. On side one, our new geometry can literally be this sketch right here. So let's actually see if we can choose that sketch, pocket side one. And there it is. Let me try that again. Constant Z propagation. There it is. Okay, let's get that in a climb milling direction. Save and calculate. And that cuts out that bit right there. And that's on side one. Okay, let's do another save and copy. This time we'll move it to Mac 2. And this time we can choose our contour, this one. There it is. Okay, and I'll just move this over there. And now we have all the operations that we could do on side one. So let's just do a simulation. So operation step, do those holes, do the first half of that pocket. And now we're on Mac two. So we basically take the sheet out, it's hanging over on this side. And now we're gonna do all the operations on this side. The, the other half of that pocket and the ellipse. So basically it's just using some sketching to further define pockets for the first half and the second half, but as much as you can model in here as possible would be best. If you put your table in there, that sort of thing, that would help as well. But if the part is too big, just use features to locate it when you when you flip it around on your table. Any questions on this or anything else from Solid Cam, you can always call us at 1 866 975 1115, extension 2. You can send us your part or your questions via the ticket system at solidcamsupport.com or stay tuned for the rest of the videos on the YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.